Number one, you don't have to only be an English teacher to live and work in Korea. I've met models, I've met actors, I've met like people in entertainment or writers or journalists or bloggers, just people with different jobs that live in Korea. However, in my particular case, I moved to Korea to become an English teacher. Now one thing that I wish I knew before moving, and I'm sure many other people did because I know I can't be the only one, is Teaching is a full-time job. Shocker. Shocker, I know. And I was like, oh, it's gonna be this easy thing. But no, teaching is not easy. I had early morning class, you gotta prep, you gotta mark tests, you have to write report cards. My had one, I had to prepare a play, like a musical. We have different songs and performances every month for birthday parties. I have to prepare worksheets and extra coloring sheets and different fun educational activities for the kids like there's a lot of prep and there's a lot of extra work that goes into being a teacher outside of the physical classroom itself so one thing i wish i knew teaching is a full-time job i definitely did underestimate the workload so if you are going to be a teacher in korea i say know that you're gonna work you're gonna sweat and you're gonna look forward to your weekends because that's when the teachers go out and play Number two, you will live in a shoebox. I know it sucks. One of the main benefits of teaching in Korea, not only is it a salaried position, so you get a great salary and you get full benefits and coverage, but they also provide housing. They either give you your accommodation, so they set you up with an apartment and they pay for the rent and all you do is pay for utilities, or you can find your own apartment and they give you a rent stipend or they give you like a rent allowance. What sucks is that means that you cannot choose where you're living. A lot of Asian countries, or that I've been to, places are relatively smaller. So my place was very small. It was a studio, so it was pretty much like my kitchen, my bedroom, everything was like in one, and then I just had a separate bathroom, so. Oh, another thing I wish I knew before moving to Korea is the whole shower situation, the thing with Asian and Korean bathrooms and this is also in Europe is that many of them are flat and it just has a drain at the bottom So it won't have a physical tub So that means water can get everywhere it can get on your sink can get on your toilet can get on everything So you have to be prepared that everywhere will get wet But the pro is that it is easy to clean your bathroom because you can easily just scrub and put the products on the floor and then rinse the whole place down literally just wash your whole bathroom like a car wash. And I hate when the floor gets wet because when you put your little shower slippers on, which if you're living in Korea and if you're moving to Korea, you will know about the shower slippers. You have to wear them everywhere because of the shower situation. But when you put on your shower slippers and you get out the shower, even if your feet are clean, it's still gonna get a little mucky and a little grimy in there. And I don't like the bathroom situation. Yeah, I wish I knew that before I'm moving to Korea. Number three, being black doesn't make you famous. I know there's that most famous black guy in Korea, what's his name, Sam Oh. There's that model, that black model in Korea who's now making a name for himself and is kind of controversial. There are special cases. Just because you're black doesn't mean that you're gonna be famous. If you're trying to model, if you're trying to be an actor, if you're trying to be the best TV personality, whatever, you might have, you might stand out from others, but it doesn't automatically mean you're gonna have the golden ticket and make it, per se. So I kind of came here with that impression and I had started getting into modeling before I moved to Korea. I really wanted to go to Korea. I really wanted to teach in Korea. I already accepted my job and everything and I just graduated from school. However, I had just got this great modeling opportunity where I was a participant in Top Model Search Canada, a national modeling competition that was held in Toronto. Competed against a bunch of girls and I had some new modeling opportunities and I still decided to go to Korea. So I made the promise to myself and I said, if I go to Korea to teach, I'm also gonna try to pursue modeling. So I did. And although I was in Busan and I wasn't in Seoul, Seoul is the capital of South Korea and that's where like all of the acting, modeling, all that stuff is, I wasn't there unfortunately. I still made the treks. I made the treks for auditions, I made the treks for photo shoots, I made the treks for casting calls, like I did it all. I didn't get everything that I did. I had an 
uh, audition for a movie that was being shot in Seoul and it was from a black American director and I didn't get the part which is fine you know I'm not an actress acting's not my thing I just thought it was a good opportunity just because I'm black doesn't mean I'm gonna get the role I went to a couple castings at modeling agencies and one in particular I was told that I was too big or too curvy and like what another black feature like that doesn't mean you're exactly it Korea has a type when it comes to modeling and when it comes to acting they want very fair skin and they want you to look like a doll essentially and I don't have that look but it's okay I'm telling you when I was moving to Korea I thought Chelsea you're gonna have your big break that didn't happen what number am I on I don't know number four you will get fat when I say fat I'm not saying that with malice I'm not saying that to offend anyone. Whether it's F-A-T or P-H-A-T, you're getting fat, you're getting curvy, you're getting that weight. It's all great and it's all good. So as a teacher, I was fed every single day. So I worked Monday to Friday and we got free lunches. So obviously they have like a ki kitchen staff and they have cooks that cook for the kids and they cook nutritious, fresh Korean meals. Imagine every day, go into the cafeteria, have my tray, and I'm able to take as much food as I want. And it was so great. However, with free food comes consequences. Yes, and that. Came to Korea, gained about 30 pounds. Gained my first 20 pounds in the span of the first like three months. So I gained weight very quickly. So in total, I gained about 30 pounds. And also in Korea, Going out and drinking or going out and eating is such a social event. They eat together or they drink together as a social bonding activity. Like that is just a part of Korean culture. For example, for our staff or holiday parties, we would all go out for a sit down Korean barbecue dinner. And we would also all have like unlimited soju. That is something that we can all share and do together. And I ate out with friends so much more in Korea than I do here back home in Toronto. And another thing, drinking is a huge part of Korean culture. Not only will you find yourself drinking on a casual Tuesday or find yourself on a random Thursday, chugging beers at Thursday party. And if you're in Korea, you obviously know what Thursday party is. That's my spot. I drink a lot more in Korea than I ever did back home or in my or in university, if that says anything. That says a lot. With alcohol comes calories. So of course you're gonna gain weight if you're drinking and eating a lot. It only makes sense, right? Right. Right. Number five. Korean guys are thirsty too. Yeah, I said it. I've had my fair share of Korean guys that I don't wanna pull the black card or the black fetish card or the race card, but I've had my fair share of Korean guys who have like had a thing for me and like just wouldn't let it go. It was a little obsessive. For example, there's this place called Yaman. If you live in Busan or if you've been to Busan and you've been to Yaman, let me know. So anyways, my friends and I went and there's this Korean guy who was like hitting on me. You know, he was tall. He was dressed nice as I think most Korean guys can. And he was cute. And I was into him. However, irks, he was a little thirsty. Homeboy grabbed me and kissed me we had talked for maybe a total of 10 minutes you're trying to hug me i'm not trying to hug you gave you another chance as i'm saying goodbye like i was over him so i was like you know i'm gonna go back to my friends i'd already left them to talk to this dude i'm like all right bye like nice meeting you homeboy grabs me and kisses me he didn't kiss me on the lips thank god he kissed me on the cheek he tried to go for my lips but i dodged Thank God he tried, but no. I was so disgusted. I was like, whoo! I freaked. I freaked out. There are not only Korean guys that are thirsty. And that brings me to my next point. Number six. Army guys are thirsty. -er. There's a lot of military bases here. Meaning, there's a lot of military men. But I've met my fair share of army fuckboys. Military fuckboys. Navy fuck boys, Air Force fuck boys, teacher fuck boys. Doesn't matter what your occupation is, fuck boys come in every shape, size, color, religion, everything, country, they're everywhere. Canada, 
America, UAE, they are huge. And my last point that I wish I knew before moving to Korea. I know a group of people who are more thirsty than the army and who are more thirsty than some Korean guys who love off the black girls. The athletes. Mic drop. Another story time? Couple story times? Pro ballers. Baseballers. Well, those are all the things I wish I knew before moving to Korea and I hope that it helped someone out there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel if you like and I will see you again. Toodaloo!